it's Miss Lady Lace here on my Glamour channel and today I have for you the next fabulous edition of my recent vintage finds. This is a regular segment here on my blog where I share some of the recent fabulous treasures I found at antique stores, markets and online. We're so very lucky here in Perth as our lives have pretty much returned to normal and many of our regular vintage events are back running as normal but with a few precautions in place to help protect us. I have been quite the busy bee lately and I've been doing so much vintage shopping and I'm very excited to share all of what I've got with you today. I like to think with my vintage shopping that I'm supporting local businesses, which I definitely am in saying that, but I'm also definitely beating my vintage shopping addiction. I always seem to miss a few things that I've recently bought whenever I do one of these videos, so a few of the items I'm going to be sharing are from past shopping experiences before my last recent vintage finds video, and I'm sure in my next video I'll be sharing the ones I missed in this video. I'd love to know in the comments below if you have been vintage shopping lately whether at a physical store or online and if you have what are some of your fabulous recent vintage finds. I do apologize for any strange background sounds. It's one of those days where the neighbors are making lots of noise. Mr. Whippy, which is an ice cream truck that plays music as it goes around, is doing our suburb. And my fridge has also just started making some sounds. So we'll continue nevertheless to get this video up on time to share with all of you. From the pile I've made on my kitchen table, I can see I have so many items to share with you today. And I think I'll break it down into categories like trinkets, fashion, accessories, so I can best share all these items and hopefully not miss anything. Starting in the trinkets department, we have this beautiful vintage talcum powder tin, which is super cute. I bought this from Dr. Russell's Imaginarium in Guildford. It features a beautiful pink tin, which is what first attracted me towards this item. Anything pink you can guarantee I'm going to love. And it has a gorgeous hand holding a flower, which I just thought was super cute. Interestingly, it's quite heavy and I can feel there's something inside of it, though it feels like it's become a solid at this point. I have not been brave enough to open it and I probably won't attempt to. I would highly recommend not experimenting with vintage powders and makeups just because it may include ingredients which are not safe to actually use upon our skin. So I'm going to keep this nice and closed and just keep it as a display piece. From Bluebird Vintage in Wembley, I bought this super cute little naked lady base. I think she's utterly divine. I would definitely say she has a little bit of age to her. She features a beautiful blonde naked woman surrounded by some flowers and birds. And the little tree trunk coming up behind her is where you can pop your flowers in and display things in there. Looking at the styling and the way the face is painted, I'd probably say she's probably 50s to 60s and she's not marked with any particular brand on the bottom. Either way though, I thought she was too beautiful not to pass up. Our next two trinkets were found by Matthew at one of the vintage collector's fairs recently. I believe I was teaching a workshop that day so I couldn't attend myself, but he did bring home these two beautiful items here. The first of these two items is the cute little kitschy skunk. He's got fabulous little eyelashes, some faux fur on his head and tail, and he is a money box to store things in, but he'll just be a display item on our trinket shelf. The second is this cute puppy planter, probably around the 1960s, made in Japan. And we've put a little aloe vera on the back here. I'm such a big fan of mid-century animal figurines, especially when they've got the cute eyelashes and when they're made in Japan are my absolute favorites. Another trinket that Matthew bought me recently for our four year wedding anniversary, Matthew gifted to me this beautiful toast car, which it has labeled on here just in case you weren't sure what it was. It features a cute deer with those gorgeous eyelashes on the front again. It is also made in Japan. I've been really wanting a mid-century toast holder and I collect deer figurines and animal figurines in general, so this was super cute and I'm so happy that Matthew gifted it to me. In our house, we collect so many different things and at this point, we have such a big lamp collection. But that didn't stop us from buying a few more recently and adding them to our collection. The first of which is this beautiful vintage lady lamp. She is pink and she's carrying a 
basket. The lamp behind is a tree and then we have a gorgeous pink top. I sourced this item from the York Vintage Fair. I did a day in the life video maybe about a month ago where I showed some of the highlights from that trip up to York. We didn't buy too much when we were there but when I spotted her I thought she would be a fabulous piece to go in my dressing room. We've been doing some redecorating in our living room area. So we already had the pink Barsney lamp. With some rearrangements we decided that we needed to get a second one so we added this fabulous red one to our collection. Matthew actually found this on eBay for such a bargain and I think it looks so fabulous up here on our vintage bar. As well as the Barsney lamp, we also bought this beautiful blue lady print, which is by, I'm going to mispronounce this because I feel like every shop owner says it differently, but Shekhar. And that's now in our living room and it's surrounded by our two Lynch prints as well. In our home, we do need to do a little bit more renovating in the bathroom and the bedroom. But I do promise that a full vintage home tour will be coming very soon. And if this is something you'd like to see, do let me know in the comments below. With our trinkets down, we're going to move on to vintage fashion. And I think I'll start with the fabulous dress that I'm currently wearing, which is a 1950s cotton day dress in lilac. I bought this from a store holder that I just met on the weekend, which is 1010 Vintage. And I'll definitely be going back to her for some fabulous, affordable vintage finds. I truly love this dress. It's got a beautiful pleated skirt, a lace-like effect on the blouse, and also this adorable bow along the neckline. It fits me like a glove, it comes with the matching belt, and the belt actually fits my waist, which very rarely happens. So this is definitely one of my favorite current vintage dresses, and actually a couple of the others that I'm gonna be showcasing today are also in that favorite list currently. On my channel, you may have heard me talk about a company before called O. Henry Vintage, which stocked true vintage dresses. They have actually been shut for a little while while the owner has been on maternity leave, but she is back and their store is back at the the NX100 in Perth City. Whilst I was there I tried on a million dresses and I had such a big pile of items that I wanted to get but I picked out a couple of my favorites and I decided to take those home with me. Whilst I was there I got these two fabulous dresses starting with this glamorous yellow day dress here which is super comfortable and it has this beautiful floral print. It's essentially like these beautiful little flowers with green, orange and yellow details and little polka dots in between. I love that the dress has just a light sleeve, it's a super lightweight fabric, a beautiful neckline, and it's just that gorgeous length I love falling beneath my knees. The second dress from O. Henry, oh boy is she a showstopper. It's this almost plaid like fabric where it's got different shades of brown creating a beautiful look. A bit of rickrack along the top of the neckline and also towards the hemline. And this one is the other one that is a part of my current favorite vintage dresses that I have. When I was trying on a whole bunch of dresses I was there with some of my friends who are part of the Perth pinup community. And when I was walking around in this dress they thought it was the dress that I had come in just because it looked like something that I wore. So I knew in that moment that I couldn't let it pass me by. Our next dress is one that I received yesterday. It is a 1980s does 1940s number and it's almost like lurex like fabric. It's super cute with some lace detailing at the waist and I think it's just super cute and comfortable. This is the kind of dress that's really good for formal functions or like when I'm at a show and I've got a quick change out of an outfit so this is just easy to wear, super comfortable and I think I'm definitely going to get a good amount of wear out of it. Matthew bought me this dress from Lucy in Disguise which is a fabulous vintage store based in Subiaco. The next dress I'm featuring is one I actually bought a few months ago now and this was at the Woodrow Garage Sale. They're a fabulous charity that have been doing garage sales with vintage and modern items. But I've had this in my repair pile and I completely forgot about it. And this is the fabulous late 1950s, early 1960s dress. It's got some lace around the top edge as well as towards the hem. It's just a beautiful style and I can never pass up anything that's pink and fabulous. As I mentioned before, over the weekend we had the polka dot vintage 
Vintage Markets, which Matthew and I attended on the Saturday. It's actually the first of their events they have run in a year with the whole COVID and lockdown stuff. It hadn't been possible to take place since, but they were back and I bought many beautiful items, including the beautiful dress I'm wearing from 1010 Vintage. Also from Polkadot, I bought these beautiful 1930s shoes. The shape is absolutely phenomenal. Why do they not make shoes like this anymore? It's just too gorgeous for words. We have a super cute bow on the front, some detailing on the very front of the toe, and it's in this like suede-like navy blue fabric, and I'm in love. They're almost too beautiful to wear. I have been keeping them in my display cabinet for now. I think if I do wear them out, it'll be for short periods of time, like just going out for dinner, because I want to preserve how beautiful they are. From Polkadot, I also picked up these gorgeous earrings here. They are a 1940s screw-on style from the Dandy Jewels. They're these super cute little fruity designs. It seems to have something like a pomegranate or maybe a strawberry, uh, some little other colored items and some greenery surrounded by little white dots. They're absolutely super cute and I would highly recommend, even if you're not in Perth, going to follow the Dandy Jewels on Instagram because they have such beautiful antique and vintage jewellery and they also have such a beautiful aesthetic on their Instagram page. I'll include links in the description below for all the businesses I talk about today. We've hit the final countdown with our final four items, all of which were sourced from Fedora 404 at the Polkadot Vintage Market. Fedora 404, or as they were formerly known, Sophista Hats, are a store I've bought many, many items from over many years. The lady who runs the store is incredibly passionate and knowledgeable about vintage fashion and has spent many years collecting the most beautiful vintage hats, jewellery and other accessories. Whilst I was there, I tried on pretty much all of her hats and had this humongous pile of hats that I wanted to buy, but I really needed to consider both the budget I had and the space at home I had for more hats. So I narrowed that down to my four favourites and I thought I'd share them today. The first is the beautiful purple hat that I'm currently wearing. So it's a beautiful hat base with two tones of purple. It's in a cocktail party style hat and it's just super cute. Lately with my hat buying I have been focusing on getting hats that I don't already have in my collection. So hats that I need in certain colours or hats that I have in colours existing but not the style that I need for certain looks. In saying this though, some items are just too beautiful to say no to. Our next beautiful hat is this beautiful little brown number which features a super cute bow, mink fur and also some netting which is in pristine condition for its age. Our fourth hat and final item for this video is this dreamy 1950s hat. I paid a little bit more than I wanted to on this item but it's seriously, when I try this on, you'll see why I couldn't pass it up. It has a firm fabric with a softer, maybe organza or something on the side. But on here, there are some beautiful hand-painted flowers, which are just simply stunning. So on the day, I did try it on, which I'll pop a little video here, just because I was so happy when I tried it on. But... It looks fabulous and I can fit it behind my victory roll like so. The real magic happens though when I turn around. Now, I discovered it looks really cute this way, but how great it looks when I wear it angled forward. It now creates that beautiful peekaboo illusion, which I think is utterly divine and a little bit different to my usual look.
Well, this has been my big vintage haul of all my recent vintage finds. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'd love to continue the conversation in the comments below. So let's talk about all things vintage. I'd love to know if you had a favorite item from my haul today. And again, if you've been vintage shopping yourself, do let me know what your own vintage finds have been in the comments below. If you'd like to further support my YouTube channel and join my Galabba community, I am now on Patreon. There's early access to videos, exclusive content, and so much more. I'd of course like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my VIP Glamour patrons. We have Kane S and Sarah C. To follow my daily pinup adventures, I post super regularly to Instagram. I'll pop a little link here as well as at the end of the video. And to never miss out on one of my YouTube videos, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and I will see you in my next vintage video. Thank <laughs> you.